Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should listen to should be your own. Just consider me to be a second opinion from another guy in the bar. Sometimes the biggest fights come when no one expects them. It's only after the fact that we realize how big the fight was. It's clear that a fight that took place many years ago, Antonio Margarito against Sergio Martinez, was a major fight in both of their careers, and it's one we need to think about today, since Martinez has the belts at 154 and 160, and since Margarito remains a player at 147. Likewise, old-timers might recall that the Lennox Lewis versus Vitaly Klitschko fight wasn't that big a deal before it took place. In fact, Vitaly wasn't even the scheduled opponent. Lewis was supposed to fight Kirk Johnson. Uh, Vitaly was a replacement opponent who took the fight on two weeks' notice. Now, as we look back, I personally feel that fight was probably the biggest fight in the heavyweight division over the last 10 or 15 years. Now, we have a huge fight, and incredibly, it's on the undercard of Juan Manuel Marquez against Juan Diaz. And this fight is between two unbeaten fighters for the WBO Middleweight Championship. Only in boxing, the uh, sanctioning body, the WBO, decided to strip Sergio Martinez, who also holds another belt at middleweight, of its championship, and they've thrown open the doors to this fight, and I believe this fight needs to be watched. Now, I've heard all the hype. It's um, Danny Jacobs versus Dimitri Pirog, and Jacobs is called the Golden Child. Right? He has been on HBO. He is unbeaten. He has a very rich pedigree. He was a national Golden Globe champion. He is the more explosive puncher. He is the more offensively gifted fighter. He is that rare fighter who can throw a combination where he can literally hit you in the ribcage, then come up top with a hook, and knock you out, or at least knock you down. Now, that's what he did in his last fight and um, against Juan Astorga. And understand, Jacobs's last two fights never made it to the third round. He is explosive. He has a knockout ratio greater than 80%. He is the most offensively gifted fighter in this fight. Now, all of that said, knowing that Danny Jacobs is going to be the favorite in this fight, and knowing that he is the bigger man in the fight, and he's a former junior, junior Olympics champion, with all of that said, I like Dimitri Pirog in this fight. Um, boxing isn't just offense, as Felix Trinidad fans know. It's not just offense. A guy can be offensively gifted like Danny Jacobs. He can have a stellar resume like Danny Jacobs. He can have a great amateur resume just like Danny Jacobs. I believe, this is my point of view, yours could be different. But I believe that offense is only half of the game. What makes great fighters like Floyd Mayweather great are his defensive capabilities, ditto Chad Dawson, and when it comes to defense, I believe that Dimitri Pirog is the much better defensive fighter. In fact, Pirog, and I understand he only has 16 pro fights, so understand this is high risk. I'm recommending you take the underdog, but I'm not afraid to do so when I think that underdog will win the fight. Dimitri Pirog Reminds me of Floyd Mayweather, believe it or not, the way he's able to time his shoulder roll. He's a very different fighter than Danny Jacobs. And understand, he too is a knockout puncher. His career knockout ratio is over 
Um, the difference between the two guys can be summed up by the last few rounds Danny Jacobs had against Michael Walker. That fight is on YouTube. You're going to see that Jacobs is sloppy defensively. Now contrast that with Pirog's shutout, and I mean shutout, of uh, Kofi Jantua, a fighter who actually knocked out Daniel Santos, the former champion, right? Uh, Pirog shut him out, and the reason Pirog was able to do so was Pirog is gifted defensively. He literally can roll his shoulders. He knows how to deal with distance. Unlike Jacobs, whose defense consists of trying to stay away from you, Pirog is more like Roberto Duran and Floyd Mayweather. He can stand right in front of you and deflect and parry your blows, and he is, in my opinion, the better counterpuncher in this fight. He pinpoint counterpunching, has a nice little uppercut that he can throw from in close. Um, I actually think skill-wise, he's one of the better fighters that I've seen. Now, he's not that well-known in the United States. He is a Russian fighter, but realistically, who cares if he's well-known or not? The bottom line is, he is highly skilled. In my opinion, he's fought the better competition than Daniel Jacobs. I understand he doesn't have the height next to his name that Jacobs does, so what that means is people like you and me, we get to benefit from that at the casino because, of course, the casino, I'm sure, will make Pirog the underdog in this fight and won't realize that this guy is a diamond in the rough. Uh, also, offensively, Pirog is interesting because while defensively he reminds me of Floyd Mayweather, I'm not saying he's Floyd. I'm just saying it's the same style. He has his hand guarding his body. He can roll his shoulders. He's quick with the counter, right? He can stand in front of you and not really worry too much about you taking out his uh, ribcage. Um, his offensive game, believe it or not, reminds me a bit of Joe Calzaghe's. And no, I'm not saying that Pirog's hand speed matches Joe Calzaghe's, but what I am saying is he can stand right in front of you. He can actually switch from orthodox to southpaw and back, and he's able to stand in front of you. It's a two-handed attack, and he can bounce from side to side in front of you. Now, just marry that with the idea that while he's bouncing from side to side in front of you, he actually has defensive skills so he can catch your hook to his body and come back with a very quick right uppercut or right hook, or even, like Floyd, just take a step back and throw a left hook. Um, the only similarity between these two guys, in my opinion, is that they're unbeaten. The way to bet on this fight, right, because you're dealing with an offensive juggernaut, Danny Jacobs, right, the way to bet on this fight is to take Pirog to win the fight, but you definitely want to straddle it with Jacobs by KO, I believe this is going to be a tale of two fights. The question for me is, can Dmitry Pirog survive the first four rounds? If he does, the fight is his to lose. I like Pirog as my base bet, and the straddle is simply Jacobs by knockout, because Jacobs, who has an 85% career knockout ratio, has very heavy hands. But understand, when you're dealing with fighters like this, Pirog, just like Floyd Mayweather, is going to start slow because he's a counterpuncher and he's a defensive fighter. Once he figures out the hand speed and the punch pattern of Danny Jacobs, I believe this fight is over. I'm expecting the upset, but you should straddle it. I'm expecting the upset. I like Dmitry Pirog. I believe this could be the start of big things. Also, you're going to hear these two guys are young. Understand that Pirog is actually 29 years old. He's much older than Danny Jacobs. He's very mature. I think he's going to handle business. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Leave your comments for me at Gambler's Advisory. If I'm wrong, punish me in the ratings. If I'm right, give me a thumbs up.